Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to today's interview with Nicole Culver. The reason I'm having Nicole on today is that I talk to a lot of people every week about content and business and like everything from start to finish of running a business. And no matter how much they learn or how many tools I give them, they still stay in this swirl because planning is really hard for my people. They're very creative. They have a lot going on. They feel stifled by planning. And what I know about planning is it's a habit that we build and our mindset is often in the way of it, mindset garbage. So today I am bringing on Nicole Culver, who is a mindset expert and a business coach. And I actually work with Nicole in a project that she has called the Quantum Launch Program. And I thought she would just be the perfect person today because she's helping people move through their garbage at a deeper level more quickly. And so I want her to share with you how we can move our mindset garbage out of the way so that we can be more productive and have more time and creative freedom. So thanks for being here, Nicole. I hope that kind of covered everything. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here talking with your people. I know that we kind of dived into this aspect, talking about mindset, because we've been doing this for the past 10 years, working for ourselves, being a CEO. We've had multiple businesses. We left teaching. You and I were both in the teaching field to really help entrepreneurs grow and scale their business. And we, similarly to you, just realized we could have the best strategy in the world and be like, this is what you need to do. And the best strategy doesn't work if all of your beliefs and your mindset is blocking you from actually using the strategy. So that's kind of how we got started down this road. Yeah. You know, as teachers, I kind of default to the idea that teachers tend to be highly planned because we have to come into our classroom every day. So I actually wonder if coming into entrepreneurship as a teacher helped me in the planning department, or is it that, you know, that's the way my brain works and it's not the way other people's brain works. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's so interesting because I was like the, (laughs) I, I say I've lived my life doing the least amount of work to get the biggest results my entire life. Like if you saw my teaching plan book, you probably would have been absolutely shocked and baffled because it had like one word. <laughs> it had like one word. It was, I'm so grateful it was back in a time where no one was looking at my planner because I would have one word for like each block. And to be honest, I just did that because I felt like I should do that. But I always really, I just went with my intuition and of course covered the things we needed to. But to what you're saying, I think a lot of people think that we're just supposed to be born into this whole idea of entrepreneurship or being a CEO. And really some of it is just about creating habits and getting into the rhythm. And obviously, Jen, that was a habit you created a long time ago. Yes, habits are easier for some people. But if you think about it, we all have habits. The way you wake up in the morning is a habit and a routine. And I think there's some stat like by the age of 40, 99% of what we do, don't quote me on that exact number, but it's some astronomical number that by the time you're 40, like 99% of your day will be on autopilot routines. So everyone has habits and routines. They might not just be the habits and routines that are getting you to where you want to go. I'm loving this already because I had this assumption about teachers, but you've already broken that assumption for me. So this is just like a habit that after five years. So I don't know. Well, I did it for 150 years. So I still say I would still be teaching if it wasn't for the crappy essays and the parents who would call me all the time. Okay. So we have determined that planning is a habit. Planning is necessary for entrepreneurship success. So talk to me a little bit based on what you've seen over the time that you've been an entrepreneur. What do you see in your clients that they struggle with these kind of, you don't want to say it's executive function stuff. I just think it's really like, like simple habits that will move us forward. What do you see your clients struggling with? Well, the first thing is that we live in this time, which is really interesting, where it's just like, do more, do more, do more. And the truth is business can be really simple. There's like three things in your business that are going to drive revenue. And yes, they can be different for different businesses. But when we live in this society of always doing more, most entrepreneurs overcomplicate what they need in their business. The truth is every business needs three things, right? You need traffic, you need eyeballs, you need leads, a way for people to raise their hand and say, I want to work with you further. And then you need a way to get to help people further to get the sale. And that can be so simple. Yet 
when you listen to the noise that is online marketing or, you know, wherever, you know, the media, it's so noisy that it can be really hard to discern what's the TLC, what's the traffic leads and conversion system I need. And then you have to trust yourself that you know what you're doing and you know how to track all that. The biggest issue, I don't even think, it, I guess it is a mindset issue, but it's really just in the overcomplicating. And I think it's just pervasive in so many people's lives, like overcomplicating your schedule, overscheduling, overcomplicating nutrition, wellness. Everything can be made, like drilled down to two or three things that will drive your revenue or drive moving forward to your goals. But we overcomplicate it because we are in this more time right now. So that's the first thing I think people I struggle yeah. with, like big, big, big time. Do you have any? Let's just stop there for a second. Do you have any suggestions for what people can do to like reduce some of that complication, either tactical or mindset? Yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of both because the truth is you and I both know that we can be sold. Everyone wants to be sold that there is a magic pill, that there's a magic pill for weight loss. There's a magic pill for money. But the truth is you have to be willing to do something long enough to see if it will work. But what happens is most people decide they want to do something. And then, so you have to pick one thing. How am I going to get traffic? What's one way? Like literally one way I'm going to get traffic. So this podcast, I'm going to focus on this podcast to get traffic. Now I'm, how am I going to get leads? I'm going to offer a freebie on the podcast and then I'm going to invite them to your amazing membership that you have. Now you have to be willing to test those the one way to get traffic, the one way to get leads and the one sales conversion for at least 90 days. But most people get to a week and then all their garbage, their limiting beliefs start coming in and they start saying, well, why aren't the sales coming in? Why aren't, why isn't my audience growing? Why is the sun shining today? And they start letting all this noise filter in. But the truth is, your business doesn't have emotions. Um, your business doesn't have limiting beliefs. You do. Mm -hmm. So your business needs to run long enough to see if it's working. It would be like starting a diet. And we know that people do this, starting a diet, doing it for 24 hours and being like, am I healthy now? <laughs> like we know, we know that can't happen. So your business is the same way. It needs consistency and it needs time. It just does. So the simplest way is to just pick one of each of those things. And I know that you talk about some of this. So pick one traffic system, put out content like you teach, like Jen teaches you to put out content on your platform and then do your freebie, do your sales system, do that for 90 days and track it. And guess what? You may need more than 90 days to actually figure out if it's working, but people want to switch too fast. They want to go, okay, let's try this webinar. Let's try this challenge. Let's try this live launch. And you don't give it time to actually be able to track data. So I think that was the full answer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really a lot of insight for people because, well, I think there's a lot of promises online about things should happen more quickly than they actually do. And I know, you know, I talk about it to try to be transparent. I know you talk about it to try to be transparent. Like this is a marathon and not a sprint. What I see on my end from my clients is, we have to create a plan and then we have to work the plan. Like you were just talking about what I think happens to people is they get bored with their plan. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. And my business coach and mentor um, says your business is not meant to entertain you. Go oh get God. a hobby. If you want to be entertained, like go watch a Netflix show. If you want to be entertained, if you're you have to decide like what, and we talk about this in the quantum launch, like what's your number one value in your business? Is it to be entertained or is it to impact people or is it for freedom or is it abundance? But if your business is to entertain you, then it might not be serving you in the best way. So I think we just uncovered one of the huge mindset traps of people, which is I like drama and I didn't even know I liked drama. And I'm drumming up drama in my business instead of drumming up business in my business. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, oh, that I don't know how deep you want to get, but I think we're kind of all addicted. It, that's the ego in us, right? It's just kind of like the dopamine hit or adrenaline in your business. A lot of, and I used to like, I just want to be clear. 
I was here, like even up until 2020, I was in this cycle of just like that launch roller coaster and, and it would be so stressful. It would give me all the highs and lows. And I was a stressed out mess. I was always in that like cortisol, stress running through my body, like looking for the next dopamine hit. And it finally, I just reached the point where I was like, my business should not be doing this to me. And I wish I could say, oh my gosh. And then the next day I woke up and I did everything I needed to do. No, it was like a 12 to 18 month process, but that was exactly where we were is we were just looking for that hit of just, it sounds like it is an addiction. I think it's not drugs. It's not alcohol. It's not food, but it can be very similar. You're addicted to that hit of dopamine and adrenaline. And that's why also you see, I don't know if you see this too, but a lot of entrepreneurs can get to a really unhealthy place. Like they'll have the business growth, they'll make the money, but then they're working so many hours a week and they stop taking care of themselves. And then slowly you'll see things start to crumble. And I think that is a really, and I've totally been there, which is why we started the quantum launch to kind of help people unravel this. And, and because we had done it to ourselves and we got to the other side. So yeah, I do think it's addiction to drama a hundred percent. What I love about this conversation is, you know, we're admitting things, places that we've been, we're admitting that there's an addiction. If you're not examining what is the mindset that's keeping you from working the plan, then you're really going to feel in that stuck place all the time. And we've just uncovered one of the mindsets that might be keeping you struggling, which is I actually really like drama or I'm looking to my business for entertainment. I think those are two really key things. And so I want to just ask people listening to think about what it could be for you. Like if these two things that we've unearthed are not it, why aren't you working your plan? So I'm curious with the people that you see, what are some other things that you see that your clients, because I know that you're working at this in a very deep level. What are some reasons people don't want to work their plan? Two more reasons that come up. One I'll say is kind of quicker. They start, it's, I'll just use a metaphor and analogy. The, the kind of like almost like a lighter one that might be like a quick shift for people is I see people who basically are, for lack of a better term, like say couch potatoes. And then they get up and they're like, I'm going to go run a marathon. And then they plan to run a marathon. And what happens at mile five? You've been on the couch for six months. So you get tired and you get burnt out and you're exhausted. And then they're like, this is wrong. I can never run a marathon. But it's not the marathon that was the problem. It's the way you approached it. So when we get into plans, a lot of us, again, I've been there is, you know, you know what they say about the best laid plans is they want to do 20 things, 30 things in a seven day period, or even worse, a three day period. And then what happens? You get to the end of day one, and maybe you've made some traction, but you have put so much on your to-do list and so much false expectation on yourself that you get to the end of the first day. And then instead of being like, wow, I got five things done, you're saying, I didn't get 15 things done. And now you are basically checking off that box that says, see, see, Nicole, you couldn't do it. You told yourself you'd do 20 things and look, you failed. Instead, if you just plan to do two things where you would have got to the end of the day and you would have said, oh my gosh, I did it. Like you said you were going to do something and you actually did it. So it's not the plan. Like they, you're not failed planners. It's how you're approaching the plan that usually is what is going wrong. And you're just basically living in this loop of letting yourself down. And another analogy really quick is if a friend called you and said, I think a lot of us can relate to this, um, said, hey, do you want to meet for coffee? And you were like, yes, sure. And then five minutes before you called her and you said, I can't do that. I can't come. I'm so sorry. This will never happen again. And then you did that every single day for five days. Do you think that friend is really going to be happy with you? Or did you let your friend down every single day for five days or worse? And this is what we do to ourselves. We let ourselves down every single day, multiple times a day, simply because we hold ourselves to this standard that is completely unachievable. So the way to simply reframe that is stop trying to do so much figure out what you can actually achieve in a day and figure out what you can actually achieve in a week. And I encourage people to then slash that in half. 
(laughs) And instead of doing two things, just tell yourself that you did one. And if you get bonus things done, how much better are you going to feel about yourself? And imagine how much momentum you build after just three days of doing all the things that you say you're going to do. And that's just the simplest thing is most people are just letting themselves down multiple times a day, every single day, and they don't have any self-trust, which is pervasive, not only in their business, but in their life. So if there's any goals that you haven't hit, whether it's in the quantum launch, we talk about business, but we had people go through it in relationships, in health and wellness. And it's the same thing. How you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you're letting yourself down in your business, look at where else are you letting yourself down and how can you start to rewrite that relationship just like you would with another human? How can you rebuild that relationship? Trusting yourself is probably the number one most important piece to having a successful business. Yeah. I love this specifically as I'm thinking about clients who don't do their content. They expect themselves to not do it anymore. They're like, of course I didn't post today. Of course I didn't send an email today because I never do. And it's about re-earning that. I always say to my my teenager, like you um, earn my trust, you know, like your behavior Mm -hmm. has earned my trust. Right. And sometimes he'll make a decision that earns my distrust And what you're saying is we have like earned our own distrust after all these years. Yeah. So that's a great shift. Yeah. Most people have such a broken relationship with themselves. At least I won't say most people, but people who seem to be in my world who are attracted to me. And I find that I am a mirror for my clients. So I attract people who are going through what I have been through. So it's it's really interesting because they kind of, I kind of can hold the mirror up and say, hey, here's what I've experienced. Um, maybe I'm 36. So for a lot of the years I lived like my life, I had a really broken relationship with myself. I didn't trust myself. And it's really interesting because I do have really good habits like in health and wellness, but then I would not say, not do things I was going to say in other areas, or I would not show up on social media, or I would not, I would just have all these things that, I would say I'm going to do, and then I would let myself down. So repairing your relationship with yourself and repairing your relationship with planning, because it's not the plan that's wrong, right? And they know the plan is good. It's just the relationship that they had. And that's the first place to look at to rework. It can be really simple just by reducing the amount of things on your list is the first place. I love that. Did you say you had a third way that we could talk about? Yeah, the third way, which I don't know if it'll be longer or shorter. I'll try and be brief, but I I touched upon it. And again, this is something that I majorly struggled with. And I realized it in in one of my masterminds. I was at a mastermind event over the summer, a few summers ago. And it was really interesting because there was about two thirds women and one third men in the room. And these were all like high six and seven figure, seven figure earners. Mm -hmm. Yet there was something about when, and I hate to stereotype, but it was just something I observed. There was something about when the seven figure male earners got up to the room and the way that they just commanded the room and talked. And then it was just something about the women that when they stood up there, you could just see that there was just all of us. And I was in that group too. We had all these, we would filter everything when we were sharing through these limiting beliefs that we had. And I thought it was really interesting that on the surface, it wasn't something that seemed to be as pervasive for the male, for the men in the room. So I started to dig into it more. Now, are there, I mean, my husband, Dan, like you work with him, he has worked, he definitely has had limiting beliefs. So I, of course, men deal with this a hundred percent, but I think that it's easier for them and I'm generalizing, but I think sometimes it's easier for them to kind of put it in a box and, and just separate it. Yes. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Carp- yeah. Compartmentalize and separate it from their business a little bit easier. Is that always the case? No, a hundred percent not. Sure. From what I've observed women, I think especially with all the roles and relationships we have in our life, it can meld into our business a little bit easier. So one of the other mindset traps that I think women also get caught up into, especially when you have personal brand businesses, is believing that you are your business and your business is you. And that 
your worth and your deservedness are tied up into your business. And it gets a lot of people stuck because their worthiness and their deservedness are kind of caught up in their business. But the truth is to really have a scalable business, you have to figure out how to detach that because you have, you, we, me, I need the freedom to have a bad day. I need the freedom to wake up and be a little cranky. I need the freedom to not be on my A game every single day. But when your business is caught up in your worth and your moods and your emotions, it will suffer. So what we work with people with is really detaching and and showing people that your business is here and you are here and your business needs data. It needs team members. It needs you as a CEO. What your business doesn't need is all your limiting beliefs that you have. Like you can have them and be over here and be working through them, but we don't have to entangle them. I love that. So that really is a key piece. And, And I think that that comes later for a lot of people is just realizing like, okay, I have a personal brand business, but it's not me. It's not me. And it can live on its own and starting to detangle that. Because if you want your business to succeed, it's like a kid kind of, it has to be able to stand on its own two legs. So how can you um, know that your worth and your deservedness has nothing to do with your business? Like you are just worthy because you're you, because you were put here on this earth at this time for whatever reason. And your business is its own entity. So starting to really detangle that. So that last one is really deep and has a lot of, I think, tentacles to it. I'm sure that that's what you cover in the um, the quantum launch program. And do you talk about this in your content? Is this a this is a topic of conversation that you're having with people? Like if people got onto your email list or followed you online, would they learn more about this idea? Yeah. So that's a great question. On our podcast, we talk a lot about this. So a hundred percent, we really are starting to bring this into our content. We started a new Instagram called the quantum launch, which we it's brand new at the time of recording. It has a few posts. That's really where we're going to be talking about this on our podcast. You'll hear me talk about this kind of all day long. So you can go to the shift show. That's where the ship show. I hang awesome. out. Um, on Instagram, it's still like kind of new. We're still trying to catch up over there, if we're being honest, because I love this. Yeah, we know in our business we can't do we can't do everything. So our number one platform is our podcast. So that's kind of like the most current. Mm-hmm. And I'm I show up on Instagram, but if you want this specific content, it's definitely on our podcast. Thank you for sharing that because I think that understanding the concept of what you just said is clear. Understanding how to do that, that's the work. <laughs> it is it is the work and I actually just had one of our clients message me this morning. She texted me yesterday and she said, "Oh my gosh, I am going to hit my quarter income goal this month." Um uh-huh. and like the the income goal she set for the end of July, right? That's the end of the whenever the end of this quarter is. I'm I'm not I won't take the time, but anyway, she's hitting it early essentially. And this has been an income goal that she's she's set a few times, mm-hmm. honestly. And that, I mean, that's happened. I've been, I have done that so many times and not hit it and it's okay. Um, But anyway, she messaged me and said, I finally am going to hit it and I'm going to hit it early. And I said to her, like, what was the thing? Like, what is the thing that allowed you to finally break through? Because she also has a young child. Like Mm -hmm. she just, her daughter just turned one. So she's been navigating, you know, that, that first year of life. The first few years is very difficult. You don't have your own life that year, that first year. Exactly. And she was able to do this while being a new mom. Amazing. So, and she said, I should, I won't open my phone now and read it, but she said, like, I finally stopped and actually did the real work. And I connected with myself and I connected with God. And she just used the word God, but replace that with whatever, whatever fits for you, the universe, whatever spirituality works, your intuition, yourself. Mm -hmm. She said, I finally took time to do the real work. And that really is what allowed her to get to that income goal. And I think that there is this huge misconception that a strategy, you and I have talked about this before, some outside strategy is going to save you. And strategies are great. But if they worked for everyone, then everyone would be millionaires. Exactly. Everyone would be multimillionaires. It would have worked. (laughs) So there's something deeper going on and figuring out that something deeper really is the real work in business. I love this. Thank you for this conversation. So um, 
we just want to remind everybody, your plan is workable. Your plan can work tweak. The other thing I want to remind people about their plan is change one thing at a time. You know, if yes. you're going to change all the things, you're never going to know where the problem was, but we can all have a plan. We can all have a strategy, but until we really do this deeper mindset work, we're going to still feel overwhelmed, confused, lost, overloaded, wanting to change course all the time. So thank you for unpacking some of this for us today. It was, I think it's a really important conversation to have. One of my favorite things I'm walking away with is that your business is not there to entertain you. I think I'm <laughs> going to shout that one from the rooftops to yeah. my clients. Yes. Now. Well, I will credit it to James Wedmore because he has said that many, many, many times to me and to you know, his whole, his whole community. So I'll, I'll, I'll attribute that to him. <laughs> and I know that you have an offer for people. If they want to get into your world, you have the quantum marketing guide. What is that? That sounds incredible. Yes. Yeah, so basically it's kind of what we talked about today is that we really have seen that the, yes, the strategy is important, but equally as important. And I would say more important is the energy behind your strategy. So really figuring out how do you take your expertise, because if your people are sitting here, then chances are they already have some type of expertise, right? So how do you take your expertise with the right energy and put it with your custom strategy? So that's what we teach in quantum marketing, which is all inside the quantum launch program. But we do have a freebie for you if you want to learn really how to get started with this. And that is at nicoleculver.co forward slash quantum. And you can download the guide right there. Thank you so much. This is super helpful. I love this conversation. Thank you for taking the time today to unpack this with me. Thank you. This was so much fun. I could talk about this stuff all day. Oh my God, me too. (laughs) Thanks for showing up. I will be back next week with a new topic, but I always want you to be thinking, what's one little thing that you can tweak? Not everything, just one thing. Okay, I'll see you next week. Bye.